Hi everyone, Anthony Morricanti here. I'm doing my third video in a row on Aperti. Uh, typically, I don't do that. Usually, I like to do a video on a specific app one day, then a couple days later, do a video on a different app. I like to keep things varied and interesting on my YouTube channel. Well, I'm doing my third video in a row on Aperti for a couple reasons. First of all, I really like Aperti. Um, I enjoy using it, so I like to do videos on it. But more importantly is... A lot of comments on my first couple of videos, and I received a few emails from people that were a little confused about some of the things I did in those videos. So in today's video, I hope to clear all that up, answer those questions you may have posed about Aperti. One of those questions had to do with skin smoothing. A lot of you really couldn't see it very well uh, with my model Courtney in my previous videos. So in today's video, I have my son Joe here, and it's a little more close up of his skin. So hopefully you could see how Aperti actually will smooth skin and what it actually does. Uh, also, one or two people mentioned that they couldn't really see Aperti get the red out of a person's eye. Uh, hopefully you'll see it better in today's video. You could see Joe's eye here. There's You could see that blood vessel. So I think you'll better be able to see Aperti not only smooth skin, but remove red from a person's eyes. Plus, You'll see how Aperti does when you're editing a portrait of a man. Now, uh, one more thing I should add before I get started is I'm going to have all the videos I do on Aperti in a playlist. I'll have a link to that playlist in the description below this video. And tomorrow or the next day, I'll do a video on something else. I have a video planned for Lightroom that I'll be doing in a day or two. Now, this is an unedited RAW file, so I'm going to start editing it from scratch. Uh, if you haven't seen my previous two videos, I encourage you to watch them, because in that first video, I demonstrate how to get images into Aperti. As you can see, I have all these images in Aperti already. So this is a low-key portrait. I want to keep it low-key. Also, I like to crop early in my workflow if my image needs to be cropped. And you can see I shot this horizontally, but I think it would look better if it was vertical. So I'm going to immediately go to the crop tool and I'm going to click this little button right here to flip it to vertical. And then I'm going to just move him this way a little bit. Then I'm going to grab this lower right handle, right handle, push it up so I get tighten up the, the crop a little bit. And I think that looks good. So we're going to jump out of the crop tool. I'm going to commit to that crop by just clicking on the essentials panel. So we're now in essentials. Now I going to edit this like I edited those other two images in my previous video. Video. I'm just going to come in and do tone first. Uh, I want to keep it low-key as I mentioned, so I'm going to take highlights all the way down. I don't want to open up shadows, obviously, so I'm going to take those down even more. Now, I could get a white and black point as I did in those previous videos by tapping the J key and getting the clipping indicators, but I think that's just going to confuse things because I really want this to be low-key. Uh, if I come in and adjust whites, I'll probably get some red coming through, but that's not really helping me. It's, it's just kind of confusing the issue. So I'm going to turn the clipping indicators off by tapping the J key again. And instead, I'm just going to edit it by eye. So I even want to bring high, uh, whites down a little more and bring blacks down a little more. So something like that. Now, I'm really done with the Essentials tab, at least for now. I might jump back here, maybe increase saturation or do something else, but I don't want to do anything with curves, color right now, black and white. I'm going to keep it in color or anything like that. So I'm going to jump right over into this panel, which is the Retouch panel. Now, several people commented they they really couldn't see how well Aperti like, removed blemishes uh, in my previous video because it was hard to see Courtney's face, I guess. Uh, here in post-production, I'm going to zoom in on his forehead. I'm going to take this blemish removable slider and I'm just going to move it up to like 10, around 10. There's 11. You can see what it did. All right. So here's before. I'm going to, I'm going to zip this slider back down to zero. There's before and there it is on 16. There's before and here it is on 10. Okay, so you get an idea of how powerful this slider is. It really does a, an excellent job of removing blemishes. Now, if you have a person that has freckles and you want to remove the freckles, you can move this slider to the right. He doesn't really have freckles, but if you wanted to do that, you could. Another thing people commented on, they really couldn't see how details worked. I mentioned that if you do remove blemishes and it smooths the skin too much, 
It doesn't look natural. You could bring back some of the detail, some of the poor detail with this detail slider by moving it to the right. Now, again, in post-production, I'm going to zoom in on his forehead again. And here is with details moved to the right. And here is details moved back towards the middle. You can see what it does. Okay, move to the right. And then back towards the middle. All right, now if you want to kind of wipe out poor detail a little bit, you can move this to the left. I'm not sure how often you might want to do that, but you could do that if you need to. I'm going to leave it right where it was to begin with in the middle at 50. Don't need to do anything there. Now, skin smoothing is more subtle of an adjustment than blemish removal. You won't see as much happen here. So if I take this one and I move it to 50, you can see what it looks like. There, it kicked in. All right. So again, I'm going to zoom in. So there it is at 48, technically. I'm going to take it all the way down to zero. There it is at zero. I'm going to move it back to around the middle. There's 50. Then I'm going to move it back down to zero. So I'm going to keep it right around 49. I'll leave it right there. Again, if you want to bring back some detail, go to this detail slider, move it to the right to bring back some poor detail. So there it is at 100, and here it is back at around 50, 100, and then down around 50. Now, if I was doing this, um, you know, for an ad or something, I might want to remove this little mole here. I would use the eraser tool for that, but I'm going to leave it. As I mentioned, usually when I do my editing, I try to remove things that are temporary, like zits, blackheads, um, dry skin, stuff like that. Uh, anything that's more permanent, I tend to not want to remove, so I would leave this, so in that case. Now, face, skin, color correction, you're not going to see much here. Um, I haven't seen much in experimenting with this version of Aperti. Again, it is the beta version, so when it is released later this fall, I anticipate that it's going to work better and faster than I'm showing you in this video. And I think face, color, face skin, color correction is mainly if you have someone with blotchy skin and it will help even it out. And you can see here, it's not doing much. He doesn't really have blotchy skin. Dark circles removal, he doesn't have any dark circles at all. Um, but if I move this to the right, you can see it's actually trying to even out the lighting under his eye here. So I don't want that. I kind of like that like little splash of light right there. So I'm going to leave it. It is a low-key portrait, so I really don't want to brighten his face. So I'm going to leave that down does have some shine in here. So we'll move the shine removal to the right. It's more of a subtle adjustment. You can see there's like it maxed out. There it is at zero, maxed out. Put it right around 54. That looks pretty good. All right, let's go to the eyes section. You could replace the iris of a person. So if you want to give them different color eyes, like you want to give them hazel eyes, you can give them hazel eyes. You want to give them honey eyes. <laughs> you could do that but I'm going to keep the original iris. So I'm not going to change his eyes. It will have by default iris visibility at 80. And that just basically like brightens up his eye a little bit. So we'll leave it at 80. Iris flare is something I like to add. It adds a little like splash of light at the bottom of his iris as though like light was reflecting, reflecting off a reflector that was low or maybe off the ground. So I like to do that. Uh, redness removal. All right. Now I'm going to zoom in again in post so you can see specifically this blood vessel right here. I'm going to take redness removed from zero and move it to 100. Okay. I'm going to put it back down to zero. All right. You can look at his other eye too if you want. And there it is at 100. And down to zero. And let's say 50. Okay. All right. So you see it moved it. It's like lessened it. Um, just experimenting with this, the week or so I've had Aperti, I think the best way to adjust this is probably to just move it just enough so you're getting rid of the blood vessel. If you go too far, it tends to make the white eye, of the, the white of the eye look like a marble, and you might not want that. So, right, you know, just enough to get rid of or lessen that blood vessel. You can then come in with the eye whitening, and that will whiten the sclera or white of the person's eye as well. Eye enhancement, you move this to the right and it enhances their iris. You want to be careful you don't go too far, but always tempted to, right? But back it off a little bit. So, 
So far, we'll see a before or after. I'll hit the backslash key or hold in the backslash key on my keyboard. There's before. And there's after. There's before. And there's after. All right, so far, so good. Now, uh, his teeth aren't showing, so nothing to do in mouth. Obviously, we're not going to put any makeup. Well, not obviously, but I'm not going to put any makeup on him. Body skin, his body's not showing. You can see a little bit of his neck, but that's no big deal. We could take a look at this next uh, panel that's directly below. This is the people panel. If you felt the need to slim someone's face, uh, obviously you could do that here. I don't want to do that at all. So put that back all the way down. Um, so we'll do it again just so there and after. Okay. Now, eyes, this is something I do often do. I mentioned this in my previous video, even before there were these AI uh, portrait editing applications available that I used to use Photoshop, and there's a puffer tool on Photoshop that I would make someone's eyes 10% bigger. Most editors would do that. Uh, it just makes them look better. I don't know. So I'll come in here, and I'll just, that's what shape does. It makes the eyes bigger. You don't want to make them bug-eyed, you know, have a thyroid problem or something. Just want to go a little bit. I'm not sure if this works in percentages similar to what Photoshop is, but somewhere around 10 is all I'd do. So there's, or you could see just a little bit. Um, you specifically would want to use that. A lot of times you'll use a specific um, uh, focal length lens and it may make the eyes look a little smaller than they actually are. I don't want to do anything with eyebrows. Obviously, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to reshape his nose or reshape his mouth or anything like that or do anything with his body. This next one here, um, this is the studio light. I did show that in um, my... I think the second video I did maybe I don't know I showed that in one of the videos again I'll have the videos in a playlist you could check that out uh, so there's not really much I want to do there um, nothing with that let's see here um, if I go to makeup sometimes what you may want to do even though it's not really makeup you want to just increase saturation of someone's skin just makes them look a little uh, healthier like that you could darken the lip a little bit so you could try that you don't want to go too far either. Um, or maybe you do. It's up to you. But anyway, I'll just do it a little bit to enhance his lips a little bit. And I actually think I'm pretty much done. So here is before. And there is after. I probably smoothed the skin a little bit too much. Doesn't look quite right to me, but it gives you an idea what you can do. There's before, there's after. Again, I'm going to reiterate that I am using a beta version of Aperti. This is the first beta release too. So um, I didn't even get a second beta release yet, which usually improves it, makes it faster. Um, when the uh, application is officially released to the general public, I'm sure it will work a lot faster and the, the controls might be a little more nuanced uh, than they are in this beta version. So that's it. That's uh, how you would edit a dude in Aperti. And again, I'm sorry, I'm doing so many Aperti videos in a row. Uh, in a day or two, I'll do a video on Lightroom. I have something planned for Lightroom I want to show you. So look for that uh, very soon. Um, this is like the last day of a sale I'm having on stuff on my website. I'll have that link in the description below this video. Everything's on sale. So check that out. I'll have again linked in the description below this video. Thank you. Everyone who watches my videos, I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.